everyone. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Brandon. And, and we're, we're the, the Wagners. Wagners. We're a husband-wife duo who travel all around the country since 2021 for Brandon's travel nursing job. We love hiking, car camping, new cities, and of course, the best food and drink. Along with adventure, we always look for ways to keep our travel budget friendly. So pack your bags and join us as we wander together. Hey Wanders, welcome back to California. This trip we're going to escape the summer heat of Palm Springs where we're living and we're going to hop on a boat to take us away from the coast. We're not headed to Hawaii or Mexico, we are headed to Catalina Island, which you may remember from the iconic 2008 film Step Brothers. However, we are not headed for the famous wine mixer as that happens in early June and we are here in July. This is actually Brandon's birthday bash, so we have a lot of fun things planned for our trip to celebrate him. So let's get started. For this trip, we'll definitely want to pack some swimmies and some snorkel gear. So first, let's talk about getting here. The most common option and the one that we did is the ferry. So other options, other options include helicopter if you have a larger budget than we do, or I've heard of jet skiing across, which sounds fun, but you need to remember it's only about an hour across and you need to bring your luggage with that. So I wouldn't advise against that. Um, but I would just recommend renting a jet ski if you wanna do that on your trip. Um, so I'm gonna be breaking down the ferry. So the two popular options are the Catalina Express and the Catalina Flyer. So we took the Catalina Express. There are ports from San Pedro, Long Beach, and Dana Point, and they are and they dock on both sides of Catalina, Avalon, and Two Harbors. So Avalon is like the more touristy side, and then Two Harbors is like more relaxed and slow pace. So adult round trip tickets are 88, seniors are 81, children are 72, and $7 for infants under two, and then bikes and surfboards are an additional $7. So you can also upgrade to the captain's lounge for 160, which of course is up to you, but you guys know we try to travel on a budget. So this seems a little unnecessary for us, um, but I've heard of some other YouTubers who enjoyed it. So, you know, just whatever is best for you. So it's only about an hour to reach the island, however, so it goes by pretty fast. Um, I'll drop the link in the comments for more details so you can make your reservation for the Catalina Express. Uh, we left from San Pedro and we did need to pay to stow our car for our trip, which was $20 a day. We did two full days and one overnight, so we needed to pay $40. So before we get into activities, let's talk a few more logistics. So um, if you've traveled with us before, you know that we do a lot of car camping, but obviously you can't bring your car onto the ferry, so this wasn't an option for us. Uh, we considered getting a tent, but honestly, since the car works so well for us, we didn't think we needed a tent, and that would be a good purchase for us, because as you guys probably already know, uh, with our lifestyle, we tend to be more minimalist, so this just didn't feel necessary for us. Um, also, since it was just one night and it was Brandon's birthday, we decided to just get a hotel. So this area is pretty expensive, so don't be too shocked when you see hotels for like $400 a night. Um, however, since we pretty much use hotels just to sleep and to store our stuff, we didn't need anything too fancy, so we stayed at the Seaport Village Inn. The staff was really friendly, and it wasn't like immaculate, but it had everything we needed, so we were happy. So this hotel was only $200 a night, and compared to many in the others uh, in the area, it was a pretty good deal. So I'll link their site in the comments as well. And they even have free shuttles to and from the dock to the hotel, so that's really helpful. Um, and then that brings us to our note on transportation. So as I mentioned, you can't bring your car across and luckily Catalina is really walkable, it's really small. Um, but the main thing that people do is to rent a golf cart. So we didn't do this because we just brought our bike, but if you want to rent a golf cart, um, I'm seeing online that you just pay per the hour and most options are for two hours at $60 an hour. Um, but again, do your own research. Um, we didn't use this option, so I'm definitely not any sort of authority on this. All right, so now that we covered the basics on transportation and lodging, we're ready to explore. So honestly, this was a pretty laid back trip for us. A lot of times we book all sorts of excursions for ourselves, um, but this trip, the only things we had booked was a flying fish tour and a boat from one of the ports to the other. So most of the time we were just exploring. So that said, there are a lot of activities that you can do, but I'll sprinkle them in as we go. Um, so after getting settled, we decided to go snorkeling. So the first spot that we checked out was Lover Lover's Cove, which is right past the docks. So we own our own snorkel gear, 
Um, so we just went independently, but if you don't have your own equipment or you prefer to have a local guide as your expert there, there are plenty of options to do snorkeling tours and they even have scuba diving as well. Um, the water is really cold, but you get used to it pretty quickly. And there were so many cool fish and like kelp forests under the water, which were so cool to find. Um, so after Lover's Cove, we headed to the casino to snorkel directly behind it. And I saw some jellyfish here, which I thought was really cool. Um, just be mindful when you're snorkeling or scuba diving in the area, there are lots of boats coming through. So another activity that you can book is um, a half submarine glass bottom boat tour. So we didn't do this one, but I saw a lot of parents uh, enjoyed this one for their kids. And after snorkeling, we decided to go check out the casino, which fun fact is not actually a casino, but it's more of like a community facility or like meeting place. Um, but we found out it was $20 just to go inside and we decided that we weren't that interested. So instead we just decided to walk around the shops in the main section of town and get a sweet treat at Scoops. Um, so we decided to take a short little bike ride into Avalon and we passed the ropes and adventure courses that are also available. And we even saw a deer, which was super cool. Um, so after that we just headed back to the hotel to shower and change for dinner. So obviously we were going to have seafood. So we went to the Blue Water Grill. We sat right on the dock overlooking the water and it was right about sunset so we got some really awesome views. And we also had the chance to try buffalo milk which is not what you think it is. It's actually a cocktail made with cream, Kahlua, creme de coco, and, bana and a banana and a shot of vodka. So I'm not much of a creamy alcohol person but this was pretty good. So after dinner, we strolled around and then got ready for our flying fish tour. So the flying fish tour was awesome. Uh, this was one of the only activities that we paid to do and I'm really glad that we did. So I was under the impression that flying fish were just like jumping fish. So I didn't realize that they actually have like wings and they can actually fly like out of the water. So on the way out, we got a lot of information about the flying fish. And then on the way back, we just listened to music and looked for the fish. Um, one part that I really enjoyed was watching the sea lions hunting for the flying fish. Um, we learned that the fish don't actually have a lot of control when they're flying and they can get pretty high. Um, so they would like run, you know, from the sea lions and they would like chase them. It was, it was pretty interesting. Um, so this was definitely a super fun excursion that I would highly recommend. This tour is only available at night and it costs $45 for adults and $42 for children, seniors, and military. So the next day we had a late voyage back to the island and the only thing on our itinerary was um, biking out to Two Harbors and then exploring Two Harbors and taking the ferry back from Two Harbors to Avalon. So this part of the trip got a little dicey. So um, I guess we didn't preview the route enough to see what we were in for. Uh, the path from Avalon to Two Harbors is just over 20 miles, but it's on like rugged, mountainous, and dirt terrain. So we had only just started our journey when we came across an area that we needed to obtain a hiking permit, but there was no one at the entry to actually give us one, and then they had a phone number and we called that and then no one answered that either. So we just decided to keep going. Um, so we passed, where we kept getting people passed by people on the bison tour and we were feeling pretty good about ourselves that we essentially were doing the bison tour for free. Um, so side note on that, apparently bison were brought here for a movie shoot and I don't know all the details, but they're still here and the bison tour is another excursion that you can take. So before you think you should just outsmart it like we did and just do this trail by yourself, let me tell you about the rest of our trip. So as we're going along the path, one of the bison tour guides stops driving and asks us where we're going. And we think we're gonna get in trouble cause you know, we don't have the permits to be here. But she actually just wanted to tell us that her group just passed a whole group of bison and they were showing signs of aggression because it was mating season. So she wanted to make sure that we got an escort through the bison so we wouldn't get attacked. Um, so we found the place that she mentioned and they were able to escort us through. They just essentially like led us through the pack and there was easily like 50 bison there. It was crazy. So this was a really cool experience until our bike tire popped. So this was 100% our fault. Um, when we planned to do this bike route, we were thinking it would be on flat roads the whole way across, not out off-roading mountainous terrain. So it got harder and harder to scale the mountains, and then we finally noticed in the last two miles that our tire was popped. 
So our bike is about 80 pounds. So now we have to wheel this 80 pound bike through these mountains for two miles. So if you're planning to bike between the two ports, definitely only plan on this if you were like an avid dirt mountain biker and you're ready for this challenge and you have the adequate equipment because we were woefully unprepared. So, but that's real life guys, especially in traveling, you're gonna have some foreseen, unforeseen issues, but you just kind of have to roll with the punches and figure it out. So we had planned to have all this time in two harbors to explore. And by the time we got there, we really only had like an hour and a half before our ferry ride. So we pretty much just ate our picnic that yes, we hauled through the mountains on this bike and then got some pina coladas and then we got the ferry back. So the ferry is actually really fun and um, is open air and it goes really fast and they plays music. So certainly really relaxing. The one-way ferry ride between the two ports is $18 a person. Um, so after that, we just had a few hours to kill until the ferry, so we had to stop the, drop the bike off at the docks, and then we just had to walk everywhere. Um, so we got some pizza at Antonio's, and then we got some ice cream at Sailor's Delight, which we really liked. Um, and then we had to start getting ready for the ferry back to San Pedro. So we'd stowed our luggage at our hotel at checkout and then we just had to walk back up, but luckily they were able to drive us back down to the, the, to the docks. So all in all, this was a great trip, but we definitely had some serious hiccups. Um, so hopefully this video prepares you better than we were. So if you're looking for like a less rugged, like more upscale vacation, Catalina certainly offers that. They have a whole bunch of fancy hotels and you don't have to get into like the nitty gritty like we did. Um, but they also have a lot of paid excursions. They have the ATV tour, the bison tour, the flying fish tour, the ropes course, glass bottom boats, snorkel, scuba tours, just to name a few. So you can also check out the casino or you can do some hiking. Um, so essentially just think about what you're looking for for your trip and chances are Catalina has an option for you. So we were only here for two full days and one overnight and I definitely think that was enough time to do everything that we wanted to do. Um, so let us know your thoughts. Have you guys been to Catalina Island before? What were some things that you did that we missed? Um, what are your favorite excursions, restaurants, things like that? Uh, thanks so much for coming along with us and please remember to like and subscribe so we can see you next week. Thanks guys. Bye.